Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we will be looking at how to create the SOLIDWORKS motion, also learn how to evaluate the collision and interference detection as well as the clearance verification in SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So let's go to the SOLIDWORKS and start creating a new assembly where we can take a look at how to create the motion. So in this example, uh, let me start off the assembly uh, with the base plate. This base plate is a rectangular shape with the two holes created. And we will be creating a assembly based on uh, this base plate. So I'm going to go to file, make assembly from part and click on the graphics area to bring up this plate. Then let's go to insert component, browse, and I'm gonna use input link, holding down the control key, I'm gonna use the output link, and also the coupler link. Click open, and I can drop them in the graphics area one after the other. So I can bring the multiple components uh, simultaneously in one click. We are going to create a four bar linkage mechanism. So the input link is going to connect with the coupler link and the coupler link is in turn going to be connected with the output link. So first thing what we want to do is attach this input and output links uh, on this base plate using the mate options and then we will connect the coupler link in the end. So I'm going to start off with uh, the first uh, input link here and I'm going to go to mate, click on this cylindrical part and then click on this hole, cylindrical face of this hole on the base plate and then click OK you can see the mismatch in the diameters of the pin on the input link and the hole on the base plate. Um, that is intentional and we will get to it in just a moment. The other option that I want to use is the offset between the top of the base plate and the bottom of this input link. So if I select for my next mate option as the top of the base plate, and the base of the input link and then instead of clicking on the check mark I'm going to click on this distance option either on this short pop-up uh, bar here or you can even click on the property manager on the left either way is fine and once I click on the distance, the part sets back to its original place and then it will create the mate based on what offset distance that we specify. So let's say I place it as three millimeters offset and then click on the check mark. You would notice that there is a three millimeter offset between these two surfaces. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's first click on the uh, cylindrical face of the pin here and then cylindrical hole then click on the check mark for the axis alignment and then let's do the same thing as keeping the clearance of three millimeters so the first is this top face of the base part and the bottom face of that output link and then again I'm gonna go to distance and then set it at three millimeters. Click on the check mark to complete that. Let's just verify that there is a three millimeter uh, offset here. And then I'm gonna click on the check mark. And then we will attach the connecting rod or the coupler link to this input and the output link. So, Let's go to mate, click on the cylindrical faces, click OK, 
Again, the cylindrical face on the other side. Click OK. And then I'm going to align the faces. So the top face of that uh, coupler link with the top face of the pin. Click OK. And then again, click on the check mark. So we don't necessarily need to be fully defined assembly because we want that this assembly should have a relative uh, degree of freedom. So we can just simply click and drag the cursor around to verify that the assembly is uh, performing the way that we want it. Now if we notice that this part needs a modification, the input link needs a modification so that it matches up uh, with the uh, you know the diameter of this uh, little post extensions uh, as the output link. So we can always right click on the part and then click on open part. The part will be opened and now if I click here the diameter is 10 but the diameter of the hole on the base plate was 15 so I'm going to change that to 15 And the same thing I'm going to be, um, you know, changing for this um, bottom post as well. So let's make that 15. And once we go back to the assembly, you would see a message that says, uh, your models containing this assembly have changed and would you like to rebuild? So click yes. And you can see that that particular modification that we just did has uh, taken effect in the assembly as well. Okay, so this is a ch change point mechanism as uh, you would learn in your kinematics and dynamics classes in the future. As after a certain point, the mechanism can change uh, the way it is running. For example, right now, if the both links are input and output links are performing a clockwise rotation. At the change point, one link can go to uh, go in the clockwise and the other link can uh, move in the uh, counterclockwise direction. You know, you can see that how it is. Uh, the green link is uh, going or turning in the uh, counterclockwise and the output link is turning in the clockwise. All right, so that is how uh, we can uh, create the assembly that has a motion. And we can use the motion study in order to study this even further. So if we click on the motion study tab and bring this uh, motion manager by uh, clicking on this upward arrow to uh, bring it up. You would notice that there are several options here that we can uh, set it once we set the animation parameters. One of the important option here is the motor. See if I click on this motor the option for a rotary motor or a linear motor appears and let's say I want to apply the power here on this post either in the clockwise or the counterclockwise direction based on this arrow we can flip that and let's say we use the constant speed of let's say 100 rpm as what it says and then click on the check mark we can run this animation up to whatever desired time that we want and also we can set the playback speed also. So let's say I reduce it to let's say 0.25x. And if I now play this, you would notice the uh, animation runs based on the power and the speed that we've provided. So that is how we can uh, run the animation in the uh, SOLIDWORKS assembly. Now let's take a look at the collision and interference detection as, as well as the clearance verification. So I'm going to uh, bring this motion manager down here and go back to the model tab. 
under the evaluate option we can see these uh, two evaluate uh, uh, criteria one is for the interference detection and the clearance verification if we want to find out the clearance between the two components in an assembly uh, we can click on the clearance verification and let's say we want to find out the clearance between the coupler link and the base plate we can select these two components or we can select one item and then compare that with the rest of assembly so in this case let's use the select items click on the coupler link and click on this base plate and then depending on what value of the minimum acceptable clearance that we specify we can calculate it for example if I uh, want to say the minimum acceptable clearance is 10 millimeters and then if I calculate it we can notice the value of the clearance shown in the results as 8 millimeters and it says what is that 8 millimeters is between the base plate and the coupler link on the graphics also it verifies uh, the distance of 8 millimeters shown in the parenthesis as the clearance between the two components our criteria was 10 millimeters as the minimum acceptable value if I change that anything less than 8 millimeters as you know now we know that the distance between the two is 8 millimeters let's say uh, we lower it less than 8 let's say we make it 5 millimeters and then calculate the result will change and it will say that no clearance so it really depends on what is our parameter that we set here and then the actual distance between the two components accordingly the clearance verification results will change now if we want to take a look at what is the interference detection so right now this assembly is kind of unrestricted there is no interference for the motion of the input output link as well as the coupler link what I'm going to do is modify the base plate so that there will be some sort of an interference so I'm going to open this base plate and sketch on the top of the base plate let's say I create a uh, circle something like this uh, let me quickly assign the dimension here let's say this is 20 and also let me align it with the um, well let me just give the um, dimensions here let's say this is 50 and that's 20 and let's extrude this by um, let's say 50 click OK so that's a extension on the uh, base plate that we've created and if I go back to the assembly again it will prompt a message to me that the part file is changed I'm gonna click yes to accept it and now we can see that there is a clear obstruction between the motion however the SOLIDWORKS is not going to recognize it automatically so you can see that the coupler link should be stopped by that uh, pole so in order to check the interference first let's go to the assembly tab and then let's click on the move component so we have different options here under the move component the free drag or uh, along the assembly or by certain amount uh, you know delta XYZ or taking it to some predefined position so if you let it be on the free drag um, and then under the options if I click on the collision detection we can select the components as these components I'm going to select the coupler link and this plate and then I'm going to click on resume drag so if I go around this side nothing is going to happen until it hits it so as soon as it creates a contact uh, a sound will uh, you know will the sound will be uh, appearing uh, you know or, or, or you will be notified with the sound that 
the interference has taken place or um, even if you go on the whichever direction as soon as there is a contact the color will uh, change and you will notice that there is an interference okay so once you have that interference then you can obviously click on the check mark and then you can go to evaluate measure and then you can measure what is the angle for example uh, if you click on these two edges the angle is 40.75 degrees and that is how you will be able to estimate as what is the maximum range of the link that can go up to uh, before the interference scan takes place okay but once you come out of that move component option then again the SOLIDWORKS is not going to be recognizing that as an obstruction however uh, when you slightly overlap these components the input link the coupler link and the extruded post let's say we uh, make it overlap sufficient enough and then go to the evaluate tab and then click on the interference detection we can then calculate once the selected component is that assembly file if i calculate then i can notice that there are two interferences appearing here and the numbers next to them indicate that how much is the volume of interference for example 1149.59 millimeters cube is the interference between the base plate and the coupler link so that much volume is interfering uh, with one another the same thing for the input link as the base plate and the input link and the volume of interference is 418.47 millimeter cube so you can figure out how much is the volume of interference between the components at that particular position and also you can you know use these other options as needed sometimes we want to use the treat subassemblies as components or treat coincidence as an interference if the two parts are uh, you know having a coincident uh, relation with one another so if I click on this one and well let me uh, let me do that one more time so interference detection uh, treat coincidence as interference so this time I'm going to get a lot more interference because I chose the uh, coincident option as interference so for example if I select this one the coupler link and input link as we know that they are coincident to one another um, and since we use that an option so again uh, that interference is uh, indicated there so depending on what option that we choose for the coincidence option with an interference obviously there is no volume overlap so you don't see any value there but for those particular parts which are interfering with each other you can see the volume of interference so that's the interference detection as uh, we want to measure in an assembly which is a very critical part of uh, analyzing the assembly so that's it for uh, this video and uh, Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next module.